Hi, I'm Paul from Test Data Services, and this video is showing Load Runner 2020 Service Pack 2 and the way it integrates directly with InfluxDB. So, what you can see on the screen here is some Grafana showing uh, some transactions from InfluxDB that were exported straight after a test from Load Runner. So, I'm going to show you how I got here. I'm going to just shrink that down for now. Uh, start a test. That's a short test. Uh, so this is what the test is doing. It's ramping up over a few seconds. It's ramping up uh, three users every sorry, yeah, three users every second. And then it's running for a minute. Then it's ramping down. It's running two users that are collecting data from X-ray in real time. As per another video, I'll link up on the top right hand side. But the main workload, forty eight users, is uh, doing some Open ID Connect authorized calls. Uh, so those transactions are running through at a pretty fast rate. These are the transactions. So we get an existing user ID based on users that have signed up. Then we push that identity. Then we do an authorize, do a token exchange because we're doing code flow authorization for OpenID Connect. And then we do a series of refresh tokens. As you can see, we're doing around 300 uh, refreshes per second at this rate with the total of 50 users or 48 of those users. So we've been running this test for nearly a minute now. So that means that uh, we're getting ready to, uh, to finish. Once it's finished, we'll export to uh, the database, to uh, InfluxDB. We can see InfluxDB settings here. I've just written localhost, port 8086, MyDB. I created the database and I set a default retention period of um, two hours, I think it was, um, and that's been labeled appropriately. And then in um, Grafana, you need to reference that label. Okay, so the test is now finished. Let's just bring up this Grafana graph and let's change it to the last five minute view and let's let it refresh every five seconds. All right, so that's running there. Now when I go to... Um, when I go to export to influx and I'm over here, let's just boost it along with a refresh. We can see the data is coming in. Now we've got two lots of data. This is transaction response time data here and this is x-ray data here. So the x-ray stuff is coming through whenever we've got some spikes but it's delayed by 30 seconds. So we might not have got these two spikes, unfortunately. I should have run for longer, but I didn't want the video to be too long. So we have here in uh, Grafana, the data from InfluxDB. You can see it was uh, pretty quick. And we did have a couple of slow transactions uh, in here, but unfortunately I didn't catch those with, with X-ray, but that wasn't the point of this, of this video. But just to show you what it looks like, if I zoom in a little bit, um, we can see that we've got the seconds marked down here, 46 seconds, 48, 50. Now notice that I don't just have a clump of transactions for each second. The granularity that's been set up for this is 20 millisecond. Load Runner is every second. But thankfully, Load Runner actually captures the transaction start and end times to a millisecond level, which means they can import quite nicely uh, into here. So the other thing I wanted to show you is to be able to graph them in Grafana. Let's just um, uh, edit. What we have to do is we have to specify um, the retention uh, period and we say measurement name, um, sorry, we say transaction response time, and then a measurement name, and then we can select from available measurements. Now it's getting these from the database, from the InfluxDB, and we basically specify uh, which one uh, we want. Uh, so in this case, that was the one that was matching. Now the other thing that happens when you do that is sometimes the select field value uh, has a lowercase v in it. If that occurs, just change it to an uppercase v and then it'll plot fine. So you can see here that we we're able to run a simple load test. That load test was able to export uh, data into uh, InfluxDB. And if we wanted to have a look at the load runner analysis, we'll see that it matches. But 
Uh, like I really like load runner analysis, but the advantage of InfluxDB is I can then pull in a whole lot of other things into InfluxDB and I get, get that really high granularity uh, for uh, like looking at instrumentation from X-ray, for example. And um, you know, instead of being limited to one second, uh, I can look at a fraction of a second. So if a spike started occurring, you know, 300 milliseconds into a second, I'll actually see that, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is the... Uh, test. Now in this test you saw a couple of spikes. If I change the granularity in this one down to one, we don't actually get to see all those spikes unfortunately. Oh, sorry, it's just regenerating. Let's just go back to transaction response time, set granularity one, and uh, what was that transaction that was slow? If we go back, uh, back again, this one here, it was a token exchange of five seconds, 5.03 seconds at 15.36 and 21 seconds. So token exchange, just look at that one. And here we can see that um, we actually have recorded a 20 second response time here, um, but we're only showing on the graph uh, 0.3 seconds because so many of them happened in the same second. So I suspect that we actually had one 20 second response time uh, as shown up in the Grafana graph, uh, but uh, we had four in that same 20 second time frame, so it averaged it down. Uh, to five seconds. Anyway, I think this is uh, quite useful. So it's as simple as setting up load runner uh, with influx settings and then just say export to influx and away you go. Hope you find this useful. Great. Have a good day.